with Hey Honey Part 2. Come and experience the love and power of God in connecting with one another. Let's go to the word of the Lord, Genesis chapter 43. If you're a part of overcomers, and we are making some changes, and bear with us as we try to get the resources that we need to launch the new season, but um, we will be switching from Thursday nights to Sunday nights, and that will be Sunday, September the 23rd, will be our very first Sunday night event. So if you are volunteering, if you're sponsoring, if you're um, a participant, um, then um, just bear that in mind, and we'll make sure the word is out there effectively, but on the 23rd of September, oh, don't you mind me? <laughs> One thing about here, if I make a mistake, you guys are willing to correct me, <laughs> and I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, sir, love it. Yeah, we're a big old team, big old happy fam jam. <laughs> 23rd of October. And the time flies by, doesn't it? Amen. Honey on the journey. So Genesis 43, verse 11, And their father, Israel said unto them, If it must be so, now do this. Take the best fruits in the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm, a little honey, Spices, myrrh, nuts, and almonds. Sounds like a church potluck to me. Hey, honey, Father, we love you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your word that's already anointed. Now, Father, I pray you anoint this vessel of clay. Help us to help somebody here today. And for this, I give you thanks, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Honey, we talked a lot about honey, and if you were here last Sunday, you learned a lot about the honeybee and honey and the fact that I, the, the, out of all the stuff that you say in 25 or 30 minutes, the, you know what the most common um, phrase or feedback that I got back last week? I didn't know bees had five eyes. I might as well just get up and said that went home. <laughs> I'm just teasing. This season, we learned a lot last week about the honeybee and how valuable it is and how nutritious that it is to our body. And I do, on a natural side, if you, were, if you put a lot of white sugar in your stuff, I encourage you to graduate into honey because it's so much better for your body. So much better. And I'm not, I'm not going to give you a health lesson here this morning, but studies have shown that honey even helps kill cancer. It does a lot, but I'm not going there this morning. That's not the point of the day. But I want to share with you that there's a reason why 56 times in the text, honey is mentioned. If there's one thing that we've learned about the Lord Jesus Christ is, and we have maybe sang a few of the older tunes this morning, and for that I don't apologize. I sort of like the old stuff once in a while. I, I was listening coming in this one of the mornings this week, and I had um, I had Alan Jackson hymn on, and it's basically a whole album of church hymns. And, and I was listening to the lyrics of that song we just sang, and it literally covers the whole gospel. Amen? And, of course, then I got into, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." Amen? And how he is like honey to our lips. And, you know, people say, well, I like the old stuff. I like the new stuff. And we were in conversation not too long ago about that with a group uh, that we just yak on Facebook about it. And I said, I appreciate that God spoke to the folks back in the 50s. And I appreciate that God speaks to people today. Amen? Amen. Because he is something sweet and something powerful and precious. And along this journey, hey honey, he wants to give us new stuff, new sweet things for today. And when he said, you're going on this journey, I want to make sure that you have some nutrition to keep you. When you're on this journey of life, we need nutrition to keep us. Amen? We need stuff to sustain us and, and not just fluff. And we've heard the old term. Greasy grace, right? Well, you heard it now. 
greasy grace. Basically, that gospel that says you do whatever you want, however you want, whenever you want, make it as long as you feel good, you're good to go. That's not what the Bible says. Amen? So along this journey, i got to put stuff in my spirit that will keep me so that whether I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death or up on the mountaintop or I'm going through the plain, I'm healthy, I'm fine, I'm fit because what's going on in my spirit, it has nothing to do with what's going on out there in this world. It will not affect my joy. It won't affect my peace. It won't affect my mind because I'm putting the good things of the Word of God within my spirit and it will keep me through the valley. Keep me humble on the mountain and fight the battles in the plains. Honey in the bread. Exodus 16 and 31. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like corundah breads, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. He, God sent them food in the wilderness, and he put a good taste to it because back in that day, there was a good feeling and flavor to honey. Now, I want to give some context because it, it's, if you just read that as a one-off and you walk away from Exodus 16, you're like, ah, that's pretty cool, man. It tastes like honey. There's a reason why. They spent all these years as slaves where? In Egypt. Slaves did not have access to honey. That was a... That was a kingly thing. That was a divine thing. That was a high uppity up. Rich people got honey. Poor people didn't get the honey in Egypt. And the Lord said, I'm going to send you to a place that's flowing in this stuff that you have never touched. I'm going to send you to a place that's just thriving in the land of things that only the pharaohs and the kings and the leaders had access to. It's going to be a normal thing for you to have access to this thing called honey that the pharaohs, even when they found the pharaohs that were mummied up and put in the tombs, they were covered in honey. Because it was a rich thing. It was, a, it was connected to the divine. And the Lord put something in the spirit and said, you're walking in full-time divinity now. You're walking in full-time shadow of the El Shekinah glory of God. You're walking in a land that is flowing in things you could only dream of in the past. On this journey, friends, you and I are not just going to church because it's the thing to do. We are li literally walking in a place that is flowing with milk and honey. You say, Joe, but if you knew my week and if you knew my month, if you knew my struggles, there's not much honey going on. Honey, there can be. There can be. There's not much sweet stuff going on in my home. There can be. There's not much honey in my marriage. There can be. Are you with me? Or are y'all full turkey? <laughs> I meet Christians all the time, and I'm like, the joy. If the Lord is your strength in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And you can walk in that place that is flowing. You don't got to crawl after it. You don't got to reach after it. You ain't got to buy it. It's been bought. It's been paid for. And you can flow in the sweet presence of the love of God 24-7. Say, oh, Joe, that's an old story back in Exodus when they hauled them out of Egypt. Well, guess what? We're on a journey. And every day he sends this stuff to us and he gives us this precious word of God. And it tastes like honey every time we open it up. It is fresh. It is powerful. It is sweet. It's good tasting to the soul. God will take something that's just plain Jane because manna was just plain Jane. But he took old plain Jane and put a new taste on it. Jesus Christ showed up to the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the Herodians. It was just plain old dead dry religion. Same book. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Same book. But he put life in that thing. And he put a word in that thing and put a fire in that thing. And before too long, that old plain thing that they were just chewing on all the time and arguing over all the time and discussing all the time and studying all the time, he put some honey on this word called the Holy Spirit. And he said, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you a new taste to this gospel, to this message, to this word. I'm going to give you a new taste of this journey with God that is not some far off God somewhere, but is as real as the mention of his name. Moves along. 
He moves along, and even in the wilderness, when they just leave Egypt, and they go in the middle of nothing, and they go in the wilderness, could you imagine driving down the road and wafer loaves start flying down from heaven? It's quite an experience, I'm sure. But it's a lesson to you and I that even during our wilderness moments, he's going to supply our every need. See, Jody, you don't know the week that my family and I have had. We've lost loved ones. We've been, we've been going through the mill and back. I, maybe I don't understand every little milly moment about your week or day. I don't. But one thing I do understand is this, is that even when you're going through your wilderness moments and your wilderness ways, there's something about God that he sends it down fresh from heaven every day, every moment, every hour. Exactly he sent to me what I needed, when I needed it, where I needed it, and exactly how much I needed. And God shows up and says, I'll even pr provide for you some of my wants and your wants and he shows up and provides to you and I when we have no other way of looking at it but saying God did that I believe in you know 2022 when we're all things digital and we want everything instant and we want everything fast and we almost think that we're owed some things that sometimes God says you know what there's going to be some moments in the life of the church even in this modern day where we're going to have to sit back and say God did that God did that that God did that he will give to you and I along this journey honey Everything that you need. Second Peter 1 and 3. His divine power, not mine, not yours, but his divine power has given us everything that we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Everything, a few things, little things, everything I need to live a godly life. What's a godly life? I'm glad you asked. A godly life is simply this. It's not running around saying I'm holier than thee and thee is holier than me. A godly life is saying when we're out and about in the community, people can say they are a Christ follower. You see how they act? You see how they talk? You see their body language? You see how they react? You see their persona? They're acting as Jesus would act. They're acting godly. It doesn't mean we won't make mistakes. We will make mistakes. Will we trip and fall? We will. But it's, not, it's those moments that, that God shows up when I trip and fall, when I make a mistake, when I trip down, and I maybe miss the mark, as it were. I, the reason I have the ability to get back up again because His divine power gives me strength to get up. Through that moment. If we were to bring back everybody in Charlotte County that used to serve the Lord into this church and other churches, we'd all be in building projects. This Wednesday morning, we met with several pastors from just St. Stephen, and we were discussing this very thing. We said, we, we had this discussion at Carmen's this week, and we said, if we reached even 3 or 4% more in Charlotte County, we all would be major building projects right now. And the reason that we're not in building projects is because so many people have been misguided, have been misled, that somehow, well, you made a mistake and God's done with you and, you, you know, you tripped over here and you messed up over here and God's done with, done with you there. And people believe that lie all the time. I've heard comments say, my land, I wouldn't dare go to church if I did. My sneakers would melt the moment I walked in the building. Well, that's silly talk. But nevertheless, it's a lie from the pit of hell that's been birthed from the seed of religion. Amen? But what gets us up and going, what moves us, what shakes us, what stirs us to say, this is not about me, this is not about you, this is not about what I did or did not do. His divine power has given you and I everything that we need. Not a little bit, not somewhat, but every bit of it. Why? Because I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to talk with God. And even in the wilderness, there's a honey coming down, and it's going to help me and encourage me and bless me. Luke 12 and 24, consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They don't have a storeroom or a barn, yet God feeds them. How much more val valuable are you than the old birds? 
I put the old birds in us in Charlotte County twang. Sometimes we wonder, oh, Lord, how are you going to do this? Lord, how are you going to take care of that? Oh, Lord, I got more month than I got money. Lord, how are you going to take care of the kids? They're going crazy. Lord, how are you going to take care of that need over there? How are you going to straighten this one out and that one out? God says, don't you worry. I'm taking care of the old blue jay over here. I'm taking care of the old partridge over here so he doesn't get shot. And I'm taking care of the old turkeys over here. I'll take care of you. Amen? He gives you stuff on the journey that will keep you and sustain you. Number two this morning, there's honey in the beast. This is a story that probably needs to be read more often. But if you want to jump over to Judges chapter 14. Judges 14. Verse 8 is what I'm going to pick up. After a time, Samson, I know it's he, but Samson returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. He was walking along a journey in Judges chapter 14, and as he was walking along the journey, this young lion came out and attacked Salmon, Samson. And verse 6 says it this way, that when the lion come out to attack him, verse 6 says it, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion apart. Could you imagine? Just think about that for a minute. You're out in the ridges hunting, and an old bear comes along and rangies hangies with you, and you, I'll take that thing, and I ain't got no gun. I ain't got no 12-gauge. I ain't got nothing. I'm going to rip this stick and head right off them. <laughs> I know this little skinny boy, he'd be running for the hills. But he had nothing in his hand, nothing in his pocket. There was no David Goliath thing going on here. There was no bow and arrow. There was no shotgun. There was no musket. There was no nothing. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And he knew he was on a mission. And Samson knew he had a call of God on his life. And he knew he had an anointing upon his lips. And he said, this lion will not get the better of me. I'm going to rip that thing to shreds right now. And that thing came out and he grabbed a hold of that. And he ripped that apart like he would an old goat. That's what the Bible says. Amen. But here's the catchphrase. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. See, there are times along the journey you're going to be motoring along and moving along and doing your thing, and a battle's going to come your way. A tragedy's going to come your way. A hurt's going to come your way. Something's going to try and kill or steal or destroy. It's going to come along and try to take your life, and the Spirit of the Lord, just like fresh honey, will show up in the nick of time, and you'll beat up that lion. You'll beat up that bear. You'll beat that thing that what God meant for good he will make sure it is all good how do you get in that moment the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily it all starts back in the first verse I'm going to make sure daily that I'm putting the good things of God in my heart the good word of the Lord in my spirit so that when the lions show up I know enough when the spirit of the Lord's on me I know it's the spirit of the Lord you with me so far Here's what's neat about this journey and this story. When he returned from Timnath, bees had come, and they built a hive in the carcass of the animal. Now, understand, this is another sermon all unto itself. Everything that just took place, he zipped his lip and never said a word about it. Never said a word. And on their way back, look at the old bees moved in, set up shop. Hey, there's honey, honey. And they reach in and they all have big old feed. And what's the point? The point is this. Every one of us have battles in our life. On this journey that we're on, every one of us have storms, we have battles. Every one of us have a lion that has come at us, maybe more than once. And you got through that, and you got past that, and you got over that, and maybe you got the war wounds to even talk about it. 
But then on a loop back to the other side of the wilderness or the other side of the nation or the other side of the moment, you're on your way back and sure enough, you bump into that moment. So let's just be real. You had a hurt with someone. Maybe someone offended you. Maybe someone really hurt you bad. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a loved one. Maybe it's a fellow church goer. And I couldn't imagine that ever happening, but it does. And that happened years ago when the forgiveness took place and the love took place and reconciliation took place. But by Jiminy Cricket, you're going through Costco minding your own P's and Q's. And that person that you had a set to 25 years ago, boom, right there in the eyeball. And all you remember is the lion. All you remember is that moment where that person attacked you and tried to destroy your reputation, your name, your ministry, whatever it is. And every one of us has got a decision to make. Somewhere in the forgiveness, somewhere in the reconciliation, somewhere in the recovery, there's honey. There's honey. I'm not going to talk about the battle. The battle's gone. The battle's behind me. I'm not even going to talk about that battle. The Holy Spirit came down mightily upon me. I recovered. I restored. I reconciled. You name it. I'm through it. I am past it. But I'm facing it eyeball to eyeball again. And I've got a choice to make. Am I going to look at the honey or am I going to look at the lion? They reached there and says, boys, we've been long, walking a long time. And look and behold, inside there, there's a big old buffet. And you got a choice to make with that person that upset you, that situation that really ran you through the mill, as it were, and really tried to mess with you. And you can bring all your friends around and say, hey, I haven't seen you in 25 years. I've oh, been 20 years, 25 years. You know what? Let's go for coffee. Let's find some honey in this moment right here. And he turned that thing around. He never gave the devil one iota of a chance of praise. He never gave it any mind, any mention, any notion, anything whatsoever. And God reached down and what was so bad and was so evil and even so corrupt. And God reaches down and says, hey, there's honey there that will feed you all the day long. You know, we live in a world in 2022 where every time you turn on the news, there's something bad going on, something crazy going on, something, and you could get so mad and frustrated, couldn't you? I'm sure there's a time or two in the last three or four years that we just shut the internet off or TV off before we did something we probably shouldn't did. And you just have to walk away from social media or the TV or whatever and say, I know the truth about that, but they're not telling the truth on social media. I'll give you a little heads up right now, and they never will. They never will. We live in a world that has fallen. We live in a world that's corrupt. And we live in a world that says, you know what? Jesus already said the enemy comes what? He comes to steal and to kill and destroy. That's what he's all about. Hello. But he said, I've come to give life. And I've come to give it more abundantly. So where you see lions, I see honey. Where you see death, I see life. That's why he said to David, even through his psalm, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. God, you prepare a table before me. Even in the presence of my enemies, I'm going to have myself a Pentecost buffet. Amen? I went to a buffet yesterday at a wedding. Holy lightning. There was everything under the sun there. And what is it about buffets? If we did this at home, we would call ourselves crazy. I'll give you an example. You get an old paper plate, and there's an egg sandwich. There's a ham sandwich. And there's some kind of macaroni that we have no way. It's just mystery. It's just macaroni with stuff in it. <laughs> huh? And then there's chili. And the juices from the chili are sneaking over into getting into the sandwiches. We would never do that at home. And we eat this all in really good faith. We're eating from the hands of about seven different cooks and chefs. And we don't know what their kitchen looked like, and we don't know what their hands were washed like. We have no idea, but we ate her all in good faith. <laughs> Life will bring us all kinds of stuff. And there are different notes from different folks. And life will send you all kinds of curveballs, egg sandwiches, 
soups and salads, some you're going to like, some you ain't going to like, but I got something good to tell you, is that even during all this crazy stuff, the Holy Spirit comes upon you mightily and says, you're going to be okay. I'm going to keep you protected. I'm going to keep you safe. I am the author and the finisher of your faith, and we're going to be okay, and we're going to get through this because I've got enough honey on this journey that even, or, even during the times when the beast feels like he's beating you up and the beast feels like he's hurting you, I am going to walk strong and in the power of his might. I'm going to stand strong and say, you know what? I don't care what's against me. I know what's for me, and I am moving forward in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just about done. On this journey that you and I are on, Genesis 15, 20 says it well. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. I like this one. I use this a lot of late. Ephesians 5 and 13. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. On this journey, church, you and I can get caught up in everything else going on. We can point our finger if we want at two point some odd million slaves that were hauled out of Egypt and going through the wilderness and say, man, they really messed up in their faith and they want to go back to Egypt. How crazy they, could they be? But you know, we can all fall in that same trap if we're not careful. We can get so frustrated along the journey and say, I want to go back to 2015. I don't. I want to be right here. I want to be right now because God's doing things today that he didn't do back in 2015. I believe there's an awakening in the church realm and the church world right now that God's doing a stirring. God's doing a shaking. God's stirring the gifts that are within the church. And I believe God is about to expose some things that were done in the darkness. He's going to reveal in the light because the church has found the honey spot and the power of the Holy Spirit. So I will not allow myself to get caught up in anything else. But Lord, on this journey, may the Holy Spirit come upon us mightily. And I'm going to have honey on this journey. As the worship team comes back. I maybe have one of those gift bags that's got a honey jar in it. That'd be cool. We got um, these gift bags. And if you're a guest here today for the first time, we're going to make sure you get a, a gift bag. And I believe inside of that, there's a jar of honey. Let's be real with ourselves that along this journey that you and I are on, there's sometimes, like, man, oh man, how much more can I do? How much more can I take? How much more whipping can a person even endure? How much frustration do, can I really put up with? How much of this can I go on? And Lord says, you just hold on. You just hold on. I'm going to be with you. And we've all been in the journey of life. Where you're walking along in this journey. Thank you, Heather. He says, here's water. And when you drink of this water, you'll never thirst again. And you take and you drink this. Don't drink your own water. Don't drink your own recipe. You drink what I'm giving you. Don't try to come up with your own idea what my word is or my truth is. You find my truth. And you drink of that and you will never thirst again. The reason some Christians get unsatisfied is because they've been drinking their own gospel instead of this gospel. He comes along and says, you know what? I know you're weary, but I got more gifts for you. I got more gifts for you. Oh, boy, there's all kinds of goodies in here. I don't know what that is, but it's pretty good. Oh, it's air freshener. Because <laughs> sometimes it does stink out there, doesn't it? <laughs> and he'll turn the old atmosphere right around and he'll change it. He'll change things right up. Chocolate. Oh, boy. I'm going to take one of these home today. 
life can get bitter and life can get hard. He says, here, have a little chocolate. Have a little sweetener. Have a little something. Because I am sweet. I am precious. This is pure organic honey. And he comes along and he says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. What are you touching? What you, what's your fingers into? What's your hand on anyway? What are you messing with that you ought not be messing with? To say, you know what? Just touch. Just touch my honey. Touch what I've given you. It's organic. You don't need any other additives. You just touch. You take in your body. You take on your mind exactly what I've given you. Don't try to add to it. Don't try to take away. Don't try to come up with some North American gospel that makes everybody feel fuzzy and good. Come to a place where God said, this is my word. And there's something about that, honey. Don't you worry. I'm not putting this back in the bag. I'm taking this one home. <laughs> Remember the old putt like story? We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so we all stand together this morning. You'll find that honey is sticky. And I'm going to challenge you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the honey of the Holy Spirit get on you. And may you be so sticky with the honey of God. Let me tell you a little story. They would put honey around certain things back in, way back in the times of Pharaoh that they didn't want insects messing with. Because there were such potents in it, it would keep them away. Church, put the honey of the Holy Spirit in your life. I don't know what you're messing with, and I don't know where your hands and heart and head is, but I know this much. When I put the things of God in my life, and I get the honey inside me, I don't want that old fake white sugar anymore. I, I want the real thing. I want the right thing. I want the thing that even helps me. I told you all this week, but it bears repeating. They've even proven that when you put honey in your body, it even helps restore your mind. Someone says, I need four bottles, please. <laughs> Get stuck with God's Spirit. It's okay to allow the Holy Spirit to affect you and to minister to you. And along this journey, I'm not going to talk about the battle with the lion. I'm not going to talk about even how, call, how cool God used me. What a story. He zipped his lip and never said a word about it. He just saw something for his family and said, here, I know this is good. You better eat it. God's provided one more time. As we prepare our hearts to receive this morning, How much honey are you taking in? How much honey are you taking in? As we begin to worship and get our hearts ready to receive what I believe God would have for us today, let's put our mind on this matter in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us here at St. Croix Christian Center for part two of Hey Honey. Join us again next week as we hear from the word of the Lord. So let me pray with you as we look forward to a new week. Father, we thank you again for all that you've done. I pray today that your word that was given to us today would grow in our hearts. I pray that we would be encouraged by it and strengthened by it. Lord, I pray now that as we move into the new week, that you would help us to understand that we are light. And Father, I pray that by our actions and by our words, people will see that you are working in us and through us. Lord, help us to be uh, an inspiration to others and to people around us. I pray that we would be a light to those in our workplaces, in our schools, and in our homes, and in this community. Father, we'll be careful to give you all the honor and all the glory. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus we pray. Amen. St. Croix Christian Center has another full week lined up. Stay tuned to watch and hear what's going on at St. Croix Christian Center this week. We're so excited you're part of our church family. Prayer service is Tuesday at 7 p.m., a time of us gathering together to see salvation, healings, miracles, and deliverance. We would love to have you join us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on Facebook or YouTube for our weekly Word online. Thursday night at 6.30 is Overcomers, Recovery and Support, a ministry that we're seeing people delivered from hurts, hang-ups, and habits. And Wednesday night, Ignite Youth at 7 p.m., grades 6 to 12. There's a time of live music, a devotion, activity, and food. Neighborhood Works will now serve meals Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 6 p.m. Come on out for a free community meal. Join us next week, October 16th at 10 a.m. for Kingdom Kids. It's Pancake Sunday. Our next session of Helping Hands Quilters will be held on October the 11th at 10 a.m. Come on out as we make comfort blankets for folks. Every Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, Young Moms Bible Study with Amanda Spooner. If you have a child at home that's not in school, bring the child with you. Bring your baby with you. Have a good time with fellowship and in the Word. Women's Bible Study will be Thursday at 1 p.m. at St. Croix Christian Center with Revelation Part 2. October the 15th at 6 p.m. is Encounter. It's a potluck for ages 19 to 65. There's food, there's fun, there's fellowship, and there's free child care. See you there. Men's Bible Study will start October 17th downstairs at the church. Doors open at 7. Session starts at 7.30 p.m. Charlotte County Dial-A-Ride needs drivers. We are looking for volunteers to donate your time, vehicle, to help people get to medical appointments, work, or educational purposes. We pay for your kilometers. For further information, contact 506-466-4444. October the 31st at 5 p.m. at the Border Arena and across from Carmen's Diner, it's Trunk or Treat. And we would love to have volunteers sign up with the link below as we need trunks and we need candy donated as well. So if you'd like to be involved, we'll see you there. For the month of October, we are asking people to donate medical supplies to our missionary program with Dale and Gwen French. You can give items such as antibiotic ointment, eye drops, bandages, Advil, etc. Our next Keeners meeting is November the 19th at 2 p.m. at the St. Croix Christian Center. We will have a roast beef dinner and our offering will go to help the Christmas effort in our community. Are you new to St. Croix Christian Center? If so, whether you are joining us in person or online, we would love to connect with you. Please take a moment to fill out a Connect card, which can be found in the back of our chairs here in the building. After the service, be sure to drop off the completed card at the booth in the foyer and pick up your Connect gift bag. We also have an online Connect card, and you can find it online at www.sccc.online slash connect. We are looking forward to getting to know you more as we grow together in God's kingdom. Thank you for your faithful giving to this local and global vision. Here are ways you can give by mail, by e-transfer, online, or the box at the back of the church. Thank you for joining us today for Hey Honey Part 2, as well as Kingdom Kids Hear Me Roar. I'm not alone. God is with me. Next Sunday, October the 16th, we welcome Pastor Roach, a missionary right here in Canada that has built kids' camps and churches, and God has richly blessed him. Looking forward to a great Sunday. We will be in person at 444 Milltown Boulevard and online on our Facebook and YouTube channels. We at St. Croix Christian Center would like to thank you for your continued support. The lives touched through the various ministries we offer would not be possible without it. Have an amazing week ahead. God bless.